We are in the midst of a sub battle this week with our Saints and Vikings channel here at Chat Sports. And I don't know about you guys, but I am competitive and I want to bury the Saints channel. We've got a narrow lead over them, but let's pile it on. So you know what? If you hate the Saints and you want to see the Falcons sweep them next year, hit that sub button because if you start winning before the season gets started, just carry that momentum right into September. And as for the Vikings, F them. Who cares? Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about a new mock draft that has Atlanta moving back, actually, to land a certain Georgia Bulldog you might like. Plus, we're going to talk about some other draft buzz, along with a, a good hard-on measure for Desmond Ritter truthers out there. But first, Nolan Smith. Could he be moving from Athens to Atlanta? Now, a recent PFF mock draft has the Falcons actually trading back from the 8th overall pick and landing Nolan Smith not far away. So here was the trade that PFF suggested. Atlanta and the Titans come to agreement on a deal where the Falcons go from 8 to 11, and in exchange for moving back three spots, they land a second-round pick this year, 41st overall, pretty good early in the second round, and a future second-rounder. So two second-round picks, in exchange for moving back three spots, 8 to 11, this is a type of trade where you run to the commissioner, you give them that card so you don't give the Titans and their new GM, Rand Carthren, a second chance to think about, should we give up two seconds to move up three spots? Hmm, might not be a very good idea. I mean, for all the draft junkies out there, or wannabe draft junkies, if you want to, if you want to sound smart in draft circles on Twitter, just suggest moving back, and you will get so many points for that. Now, here's what Brad Spielberg, uh, Spielberger said from PFF on Nolan Smith. Prior to suffering a torn pectoral muscle, Smith was routinely mocked in the top half of the first round. After an absurd NFL combine performance, we'll vault him back into the upper part of the draft with Atlanta adding a much-needed pass rusher off the edge. Before his injury, Smith posted a 22.6% pass rush win rate that ranked 19th amongst FBS edge defenders. Despite his 238-pound frame, Smith is also tenacious, a tenacious run defender with his 82.4 grade in 2022, ranking 16th in the FBS. He needs to primarily be deployed as a wide nine outside linebacker, but new Falcons defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen should be able to make that work given Smith's ridiculous explosiveness. Now, the wide nine is referring to just the amount of linemen you have up there with your front four or three in Nielsen's case here. But grade this overall move, the idea of going back three spots, landing Nolan Smith, who I think would be a good pick at eight for the Atlanta Falcons, but in the process, also picking up two future, uh, two second round picks, one this year, one future second rounder. For me, I'm going to give it an A minus. The only reason the minus is there is because it serves as a reminder that this is the NFL draft we are talking about. Nothing is a guarantee. Nothing is absolute. It's all a bit of a crap shot, a crap shoot to some level. So. It's an A minus, but in reality, I think it is an A because Nolan Smith, he's a really good football player. And to get him and two second round picks in the process, that's a GM, that's a move a lot of GMs would get behind. Smith for the Bulldogs the last two years, like Brad mentioned, he had a season cut short in November of 2022, but in eight games, seven tackles, three sacks. The year before in 2021, that loaded Bulldogs defense. Eight tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. And you ask the right people around Athens who the best defender was on that team, you're going to get a variety of answers, but one of them may be Nolan Smith. Now, in his career for Georgia, I mean, he was one of the most consistent players on this defense, right? Three sacks, four and a half sacks, two and a half sacks, back-to-back -back seasons coming out of the gate. So Nolan Smith, the stats check out, the tape is there. Everything is awesome around him. The only little hiccup was that torn peck, which just took him so off some GM's radar. But a local guy from the Peach State who wants to stay in Georgia, wants to go down to ATL, 
There's nothing better than I like to say when your Saturday team and your Sunday team align. So if you're a Georgia fan and a Falcons fan, this is a dream pick right here. Now, if you remember, Nolan Smith not long ago was talking to some Falcons or Atlanta reporters, and they asked him about the possibility of going to the hometown team. Here's what he said. I'm a hometown kid, and it just means a lot to me. It just seems like they see a future in me and that they really want to keep me home. Nolan Smith, I think, is one of the more slept-on players in this draft class. Like I said, that Georgia defense was absolutely a minefield of studs and walking in future NFL Pro Bowl talent. As years pass, we'll really know which one of them was better than the others, but Nolan Smith might be towards the top and might be one of the forgotten, I wouldn't say unsung heroes because he was definitely praised and given his roses, but he definitely could be someone that may flew under the radar a little bit. Now, the defensive line depth chart, I don't think he's going to line up as a true defensive end, but he could come off the edge, right? Arnold Ebiketti, uh, Michael Walker, Troy Anderson, Nolan Smith, that could be a nice growing linebacker room. Caden Ellis, too, I forgot about that signing. So if you add Nolan Smith to that mix, that's going to go a long way in what's been my, I don't know, rallying cry for the last month. Add more pass rushers. Nolan Smith has no problem getting to the quarterback. So what say you? Should the Falcons draft Nolan Smith? Type D for draft or P for pass. Let me know in the comment section. I always love hearing from what you guys have to say. So sound off down below. Now, another interesting draft rumor on today's show. Could the Falcons be targeting Osiris Torrance? So, the Falcons will be meeting with the Florida offensive guard, and Atlanta does have quietly a medium-sized hole at the left, left guard position right now. Now, Tom Pelissero tweeted out, Anthony Richardson isn't the only big attraction at today's Florida Pro Day. All-American all-America offensive lineman Osiris Torrance had dinner last night with the Titans plus meetings with the Rams, Falcons, and Saints per sources. Another Gator with a shot to go round one. Like we said, the Falcons offensive line is coming together nicely. I think Torrance is going to be a first-round pick. He's the best interior offensive lineman in this draft class. I don't think they have eyes or plans to move him to center. Maybe it's left guard, Colby sort of being... You know, not someone that's impossible to move on from, unlike Chris Lindstrom here. The Falcons, I think, do need a left guard. Can they get by without one? Yes, it's not an absolute gaping hole that's going to be the Achilles heel of this team. But if you think there's an upgrade to be had in Torrance, maybe that is somewhere, especially if they slip into round two somehow. You could be picking up the phone aggressively to try, try and move up and get. Here were his PFF grades from 2022. He played a lot of football for Florida, 698 snaps, very reliable, an overall grade of 88, pass blocking 76, run blocking 89. Personally, I love to see offensive linemen come out of college that are better at run blocking than pass blocking because it's a little easier for an offensive line coach to help bring along a lineman to learn how to go backwards and get their hand placement down better. It's a lot harder to teach them to run faster and meaner and more aggressive forward like you do in run blocking here. Now, I don't think this is going to be a top 10 pick. So if you are eyeing Torrance, you could either move back and get him in the mid to late teens, or you could trade back into the first round, right? Let's say Atlanta did go from 8 to 11. Well, then they've got some more second round pick ammunition to maybe jump back into the end of the first round and land a guy like Torrance. So... Be the GM, do you think the Atlanta Falcons should draft the Florida Gator? Y for yes or N for no? Weigh in for me down in the comment section. Now, for all of you Desmond Ritter truthers out there, you're going to love the end of this video because the hype train, choo-choo, it is moving right now. So, Orlando Ledbetter tweeted out, Falcons coach Arthur Smith said Desmond Ritter is the starting quarterback. We expect Desmond to take the next step, Smith said. He would not comment about Lamar Jackson. We are going to talk about our own players. Very coach speak right there, right? I'm the coach. I don't put the roster together. I work with what I have right now. And Desmond Ritter is the starting quarterback, no doubt about it, going into the 2023 season. He improved as, he, as the games went along last year in four starts from start number one, not throwing a touchdown against the Saints, to 
as the season moved along, he looked like he got better and better, right? You guys who have watched the show before know that we have been on the trade for Lamar Jackson train for a while because I do believe Lamar Jackson is better than Desmond Ritter. I don't think that's a hot take to have. But by all means, like... Number one goal, or the dream scenario for the Falcons, is Desmond Ritter is him. He is the guy. You don't have to give him or give a quarterback a huge contract. You get to keep all of your draft picks and build around Desmond Ritter. If that works out great, the Falcons are going to be in an awesome spot, right? The only hiccup is if you do all of that and Ritter's not the guy... Well, look at the graveyards of some previous NFL teams that had great rosters but no good quarterback, and then look what ended up happening to them. It's not very glamorous. So that's why I'm always in the camp of if a star quarterback in his prime is on the market, you'd be foolish not to explore it. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed to the channel and you enjoyed today's free video, please go ahead and subscribe. That way we can get you guys more Falcons content as we continue to grow here.